you so much, Mr. Chair. And I want to uh, say huge thanks to all our presenters today. We really have an outstanding uh, group of presenters with some very important information. Uh, my initial questions are going to be directed to uh, Mr. Stephen Tobin. Um, Mr. Tobin, uh, you have you are, have addressed an issue that is literally on the minds of all of us and comes up in the House of Commons almost every single day, which is how is it that we address our uh, skills and labor shortage issue? And thanks for letting us know or reminding us that those are two very different things. Um, I hear you very clearly when you talk about your three-point plan, the comprehensive labor strategy, uh, diagnosing uh, the labor um, issue first, and then the cohesive and integrated skill strategy. Uh, the first thing I, I would like to ask you to do, and this is something I, I'm hoping you'll be able to submit, um, in terms of where we start with the comprehensive labor strategy, you had indicated that it's important to meet with a series of stakeholders. And I wonder if you wouldn't mind submitting um, in, short, in, in short order uh, to this committee who the list of stakeholders you, you would propose that we have. So if you could do that, I'd be very grateful. Uh, and then I'm going to move to my next question. I'll have you respond to that first one in a minute as well at the same time. But on your second part, where you diagnose the problem, the labor problem across the country, you talked about um, streamlining open access or, or providing open access to existing sources of information and EI. Could you elaborate a little bit more on those existing sources of information and a little bit more what, what you mean by EI? And then is there any other data that you think we should be collecting that we, we haven't started collecting yet? Thank you. Um, well, thank you for the question. So, I mean, the quick answer to your first question is yes, I would be happy to give some consideration as to the stakeholders uh, that should be consulted as part of the development of a comprehensive labor market strategy. So, yes, uh, with with pleasure. On the, the second point with, with respect to data. Look, as a traditionally as a researcher, I would always say that more data is always better, of course. But when I think about policy, uh, there needs to be some consideration as to the costs and benefits of acquiring new data. And so this is why, in the first instance, my proposal on the labor and skill shortages is to leverage and harvest data that's already there so we can better diagnose the problem. And so when I think about that issue, I think about two sources of information. One is about the source of information with respect to people. Um, so we have great information on unemployed people across this country, very detailed, very granular, um, by those who are receiving uh, employment insurance. It exists. Of course, it's individual level data, so it takes some time to process. So we need to be careful with respect to privacy and data quality, but allowing a more streamlined, open access while protecting that privacy to that data will give us great and detailed insights as to the availability of labor pool across this country. Uh, right now, there is some availability to that data, but it comes with such a significant delay, uh, very difficult to access, but it is there. Uh, and I think we should start by uh, leveraging access to that information. At the same time, we also have very good information on the demand for labor through vacancy surveys. Um, this coming through Statistics Canada, again, wealth of information available on the types of jobs that employers are asking for. Uh, and so by allowing us greater and more open access to that information, uh, it will give us some insights as to the types of jobs that employers are looking for. And so I would start by harnessing and leveraging those two existing data sets. Now, if asked and pushed, okay, what more data do we need? Uh, I would, again, start by seeing what that information would tell us first. But I think right now, to my point about the difference between uh, skills and credentials, right now we continue to sort of lack good information on the types of skills that employers are looking for, which sort of puts us in a difficult place as to how we can develop and design training programs that will give individuals those skills. And so even the way we collect information today is very much about, I would say it's term skill level, but in essence, we're talking about qualifications and credentials. So I think this is the one area where I think we need to be considering where and in what manner we should be collecting better information on skills. 